I want to ask, what is our opinion on leadership and our leaders in Africa? One of the things to, to point out concerning our African leadership is the fact that most of it is inherited dominance leadership, where one, if you are a leader, you have to control, you have to manage other people. And the perception has been like the people who are led do not really know what they are supposed to be getting to, so that the vision has to be made for them, the direction has to be maintained for them. And I think this is what has been lacking. Because I think broad participation of bringing everyone on board, as we have learned from this course, that everybody will be a participant in a team. I think that nationwide participation would be extremely important to improve the quality of our leadership in Africa. Then, leading by example. Because most of them, what they say is not what they do, and what they expect from others is not what they deliver. And so we need to be part of that and they help where everyone can to improve the situation. Most of our leaders in Africa, um, do not uh, <clears throat> give room, even as they lead. They don't give room, much room for for learning what they, maybe what they don't know or what they don't understand. They lead according to the way they think they should do it. And secondly, most of our leaders, they lead, but you find they leave the followers behind and they don't even check on the people that are following them, if they are following or if they are part of uh, the system. The other thing that I noticed with our leaders in Africa is that uh, most of the things that they, they say, they do not follow up, one. Two, where decisions are made and uh, implementation, in, implementation is supposed to take place, most of our leaders don't even care to check if whatever they say or whatever advice they are given is implemented. And the other thing that I can say about our leaders in Africa is that uh, most of them also surround themselves with people who do not give them the right support. They surround themselves with the, maybe their close networks, but really without considering if the people that are surrounding them are of any help to them. I think one of the big problems with most of the African leaders is lack of democratic accountability. The moment you are not democratic enough, then you don't account. If you don't account to the people, people get lost. You want to overstay and stay on. And the moment you engage that gear of wanting to stay longer in power, then everything else is lost. Leaders who are going to make impact in, in African countries are going to invest a lot in democratic accountability. But when you see some of the trends with some of the African countries exercised by leaders such as presidential term limit lifting, where you, for example, most of the constitutions have been changed manipulated actually, not simply changed through the normal process, term limits have been lifted. A leader who lifts a term limit wanting to perpetrate his power, his long stay in power, is not a leader that should be trusted. And when that trust, and they detect it, that through the manipulation, the trust is eroded, and then that now becomes a very, very big danger for the country. The recent example in Burkina Faso, Kompaure, former leader of Burkina Faso, must have detected that he has lost trust of the people. And that's why he was trying to manipulate the parliament into lifting the term limit so that he stays for life. Ask yourself a question. A leader who had been in power 
for 27 years. What is it you are going to do that you, are, you have not done in the last 27 years? So, lack of democratic credentials, lack of accountability, leads to working to perpetrate yourself in power, and eventually it destroys the nation or nations. In Africa, our challenge also on leadership has to do with uh, the value system we have in society. It's like values have eroded over time and uh, the expectations from leaders has made them more or less very personalistic. Uh, anybody who is in a leadership position, what society expects from you more or less puts a lot of pressure in your performance. We have become too materialistic. If you are a leader and you don't amass wealth, and when you are out of there, people see you as a failure. So people, when they are in position of trust, they tend to focus more on what they can gain personally as against what service they need to provide to society. I think if we want to have effective leadership, we need to look at our value system. When you are a leader, you are there to lead people and you are there to serve them. And uh, you also have to be more or less uh, open to criticism, allow people... You, you, nobody is perfect. A leader, you are not uh, a superhuman. So when you are there, allow criticism, people to su uh, provide suggestions to your style and what you are doing. If you don't allow for criticism, you will not know whether you are succeeding or you are failing. So I think we need to address our value systems again if we want to succeed. In your opinion, can you tell me some of the challenges a lot of our leaders or our leadership faces in Africa? Uh, I think that our leaders, um, when uh, they get leadership position, um, don't uh, focus on changing their society, but rather changing their own circumstances. It's their immediate family, it's their extended family. Uh, there is, because of that, we have very weak institutions because institutions which are supposed to check the leader and provide him the mechanism to be able to rule are compromised. Uh, security system doesn't work, the justice system doesn't work, the internal security system doesn't work. And checking that means checking themselves. So eventually they find it difficult to to do what they are supposed to do to make sure that we have the right institutions to enable them to govern. I think it is a weakness of our institutions, which is a major problem in leadership. And if we can make our institutions work, then we can be able to achieve our objective. I want to raise a point about uh, the social demand. They have uh, the, the le our leaders. Uh, when they get uh, in a, to position in a, to leadership position, they have a, a real social demand from their background, from the people of their communities, from the tribes, from the people of their parties, the political parties, because these people are waiting this leader to do things that are contradictory, that are not uh, in the same way uh, the, 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 the professional work should they have to do. It is something about the, the, what uh, the family wants to do to get wealth and to get, give them advantages or maybe some advantages. There are things that are different from the professional perspective and uh, other things that are political aspects uh, of the, 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 the parties who need uh, maybe some uh, money to, 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 to rule better, to, to, to to reinforce the party or some some wealth from the, 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 the leader. There are too many things that makes the leadership uh, weak at the early beginning of the, 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 the leadership position. The masses are not civilized to a level that they demand certain changes and that compromises the leaders because there is no pressure for them to deliver. They find themselves like uh, same gods and that one is a, is a challenge. Although they use it to perpetrate themselves in power, it gives them too much powers but it works as poison at the same time. Because to, to, to have that power, 
without anybody checking on you, without systems that check you, without the population that demands certain things from you, over time, it works as a poison against you. So I think if the population or the red, if the red can demand certain things, then leaders will be accountable and the total effect will be countries will move forward in a, in a democratic way. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, one, one thing. The other thing to note is that uh, most of the African leaders find themselves captives of global systems and that the space available to you is all just so little for you to navigate through to make any change. For some of the things you come and find, the government has committed itself to this and these uh, commitments that are long term. Then also the international community you have to negotiate. And some of the interests are actually not at the interests of the country itself. And that when they cannot comply or fit within the systems, they are also ruled out of power. So they have dilemmas. The communities have pressure. The international community is pressing them. And then, then internal weaknesses. Sometimes leaders get into office and they don't believe that change can occur. So and when you don't believe, then you cannot pursue with the commitment. There are two words. There is a word, the developed word, setting a pace. Then there is an developed word, following. And that creates a terrible speed that some of these countries of ours can't cope. Whereas in the developed world today, there was time to fine tune and align their objectives and achieve them because for them there was nobody setting a pace. For us, we, the standard is already set, and that one is a very big challenge. Uh, as much as uh, maybe most African countries have mineral resources and other resources, but I think our challenge is uh, we do not have technology to, do, to get the maximum value out of the resources that we have. So as a result, most of our leaders have a problem of... Uh, Maybe making things work because there's a serious challenge of, uh, of resources. And then the second point is the other challenge that our leaders find ourselves, themselves in, in Africa is the issue of corruption. Most of those leaders, the presidents and other leaders, people that surround them do not work to serve the nations, but they work to enrich themselves. They are so corrupt, such that you know, it's hard even to drive sometimes the country forward because most people want to just accumulate wealth for themselves. Some of the challenges we also face with leadership in Africa maybe has to do with uh, our socio-cultural background. The typical African setting believes that uh, leadership should not be challenged outrightly. And uh, that gives scope to Whatever leadership is not only political leadership in our institutions and uh, people tend to accept uh, docility. They, they are docile, they accept whatever the leadership put on them. That's one. And then the, the second one, as far as political leadership is concerned, is that uh, maybe we need to look at our political systems again. Because the systems we have is like a winner-take-all. When a party, a group wins an election, they take everything. The opposition is out of everything. So it's like everybody sees ascending to that political leadership position as the ultimate aim of amassing for themselves. When you are out, you are in the wilderness until you get there before you can realize something. So when a party wins, it is only their cronies that get appointments. And if you are not even careful, the members of the opposition that are in positions of government, they are dismissed. So I think uh, maybe the political systems need to be addressed so that uh, it becomes all-inclusive. It's not just winner-take-all. Okay, one other challenge I didn't hear anybody talk about is um, vision. In Africa, I think um, in Africa, I think some of our leaders are not visionary enough. As I said earlier, they don't know the purpose for coming. The purpose they are coming into office. 
if I'm if I become president today, I, I have an idea of the things I want to change. I have an idea of the things I want to do. But is that the same for some of the leaders we have now, or they just get in there and they just want their, they just get in there because they are popular and they want to finish the term of their party? For Africa to grow to the next level, which one do you think we need first? Strong institutions or strong leaders? I think we need both. Because a strong leader without strong institutions cannot operate. Uh, in the same way, strong institutions without somebody to drive the institutions will not work. So I think that much as we need strong leaders, we need the institutions which will be the vehicle through which the leader can monitor and control his, his activity to, to perpetuate his uh, vision. Uh, I'm saying this because the leader is up there and the governed are down there. There's very little interaction between them. So the only way he can be able to be sure that things are working is to make sure that institutions in place are working. Then automatically uh, things would, would work. Yeah, I'm not sure maybe we need to prioritize as to which one comes first because it depends on what you mean by a strong leader. Uh, with all these challenges we are facing in Africa, if you don't have somebody who is strong, in terms of being a benevolent, I mean leader, who is strong in the interests of the nation, not strong uh, in, in trying to amass wealth or satisfying those around him, but strong in making decisions in the interests of the nation. Visionary yeah, visionary focus. focus. If, for example, your, your close ally you think is corrupt, you have the courage and the fortitude to dismiss that person and then allow the person to be tried. Those are the aspect of the strongness we are talking of. Institutions, what makes a, a, a country, a political system is institutions. If there are no institutions, even the governance system will not function well. So to me, I believe at this stage of our, our, of our transition in Africa, we need both. But the strongness of the leader has to be benevolent in the interest of the nation, not personal interest. The, the question is very important, but I wish it, it was asked in the 60s. Because 60s, 1960s are the, is the year the African countries got independence. If that question had come then, probably it would have shaped how to move forward. Because this is 2014. Institutions should have started with independence. Because it is, it is strong leadership at first that builds institutions, and then institutions create more good leaders. This is how it moves on. Unfortunately, we jumped all those stages and we are now going back to what we should have asked uh, many decades back. But in summary, we need strong institutions. If you say we need strong leaders, because all these who are causing chaos on the continent, that's what they say. They claim they have vision, they claim they, have, they love nations, they, but when you look at the practice, they don't walk the talk. So I think we need strong institutions. I think we need uh, strong institu institutions that could even be stronger than the leaders. We need strong institutions. Why we need strong in institutions is that strong institutions will help to guide the leader, will help to, to put control on or even the leader, because if the institutions are weak, that's where we find uh, strong leaders manipulating the institutions to do things their way. But if, if institutions are strong, they will not allow leaders even to change constitutions willy-nilly to do, put themselves in positions of power willy-nilly. If I remember well what happened in maybe Malawi when uh, Bingo died, I think they wanted to, someone wanted to take over power outside the, what the constitution stipulates. But because they had a strong, strong institution, the, the people in that uh, department, the justice department, I think they just referred everyone to the, to the constitution to say, according to the constitution, ABC cannot happen. But if the leaders are stronger than the institutions, they will do, like, that's why we cry even in all countries that elections are a formality and all sorts of things, because the institutions are too weak. But in situations where institutions, institutions are strong, leaders will come and go, but institutions will remain. So what would happen if we have weak institutions? The countries won't move forward. 
But if we have strong institutions, even if the leader goes, the next leader will be guided by those institutions that remain in place. Institutions must remain in place and they must be strong so that they put controls on all the leaders that come in and go. Yeah, I, I think talking about strong leadership and uh, strong institutions, one of the problems we have in Africa are leaders who do not want to relinquish power. That once they're in office, they don't want to leave. And the reason is they don't trust the institutions that are in place. That once they leave, whatever they have put in place will be sustained. Or that they will be protected for whatever mistakes or omissions that they could have uh, committed. So I would say, how, however, as much as strong leaders are necessary, their strength will be lost if we do not have strong institutions. And for their impact to last, it must be embedded within institutions. Because some of the people we choose, we do not know them. It's only when they come into the office that we know who they are. Now, the only way to control the bad ones among them is when they come and find their already institutions that cannot allow them to be excessive. Then as we look for a better leader over and over the period. Uh, personally, Africa needs uh, strong institutions because I was very, um, I was very surprised with the scenario in uh, Ghana when uh, President John Evans Sutter Mills died. And in, the, in 20, less than 24 hours, the devolution of power has been put in place. And uh, before uh, 8 p.m., the parliament has been uh, meeted, meeting to, design to, 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 to designate uh, who is the, the next president, the vice president of uh, the case. And it was very interesting. We need strong institutions. But since many of our problems are not uh, uh, our, our, it's our uh, social behaviors, our mentality, I think there's also a need. This, these problems could not be uh, changed by, uh, by just by laws or by decrees. I think uh, it's, ne it's a need of a visionary leader in Africa, a visionary leader committed to achieve great results and to, to, to move for the, the, the country or the people forward to the, the, the next step. Uh, the late uh, President Kaba in Sierra Leone, uh, uh, when they had the election, <coughs> it served as uh, one of the countries where the ruling party lost election to the opposition. They conducted the election and uh, his members of his cabinet, all of them met him and said, no, why can you allow the electoral commissioner to declare uh, the opposition as winner. You should not do that. We are in power. We have the authority of doing anything as long as you are in the seat. He told them no. We have to allow the electoral commissioner to conduct the election to the best of her ability and whatever result she came out, comes out with, it has to be acceptable that our country has gone through war and these are some of the elements that uh, will lead to disgruntlement and then revert, reverting back to crisis. So these are some of just the examples I'm saying that we need leaders that have strong will to take decisions that they know is best for the nation. This issue of strong leadership or strong institutions, I just want to use Jaro's earlier comment. He said probably we need to look at the value systems or how to share power. Because it looks like winner take it all is not head, uh, taking us anywhere. But this is happening because of lack of institutions. To the extent that even civil service, which, is a, which should be institutionalized, it's not. Therefore, if a civil servant is suspected to, be, to belong to another party, this civil servant is sacked. Because of lack of what? Of institutions. So. You can see it now goes even to the extent of saying, okay, let's remove democratic path because democracy demands majority rule. But it's not working in the context of Africa. Why? Because we don't have strong institutions, strong civil service. We have countries like Italy. Italy has in the past run for nine months without a president or rather prime minister. 
Why? Because of strong institutions. Civil service runs the country without necessarily having a head of state. So I still think we need to work hard and build strong institutions. I think a strong leader could either be positive or negative. So Africa actually needs strong institutions. But the questions that come to mind are one, who builds these institutions? Two, what are the institutions we actually need? And my conclusion is simple. It is the demand the people place on their leader or on the government that helps create these institutions. And these institutions will in turn, if I let me read it the way I wrote it, I think it's the demand of the people on their leaders that will help create the desired institutions which will help guide future leaders and run the system irrespective of who is in power as the leader or the party that is in power. So I want to agree with President um, Obama that Africa needs strong institutions. But we can't just leave it like that. As we go, we need to propagate this gospel that yes, Africa needs strong institutions and these institutions will not come unless the citizens put hands together and place a demand on the government or place a demand on the leader at whatever strata of um, leadership we find ourselves to actually build this system. Do you have any advice or suggestions on improving leadership in Africa? If we are not careful, uh, our generation is lost. So what we need to do now is maybe focus on those coming up, our children. And this will have to do with our educational system so that maybe we inculcate into them ideals that are more or less that are progressive, not individualistic in terms of uh, values, what they need to do in society, not just amassing wealth. For us, maybe if we are not careful, we are lost. Uh, maybe we need to focus on our, our educational institutions so that uh, we, we build on, in, in the minds of our youth, those coming up, the culture of selflessness, service, humanity. If, if you work hard, t let them know that if you work hard, you can also succeed in life and get in whatever you want, not through dubious means. I think the biggest uh, need is to build political parties in Africa. Because whatever candidates we get, they are processed and refined and chosen by political parties. And the, 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 the earlier theories of that political parties are in looking for power, and that once they have power, they will keep it. I would think if they knew that political parties are there to improve society, not blunt power, to improve society, and that way they will start cultivating leadership from the youth up to the point that one now matures to be entrusted with the leadership of the country, the political party as an institution has played its role. Lead our leaders should learn to share the vision with the people that are supporting them. Because we find the leader is saying they are running with the vision, but the people who are supposed to be doing the work and implementing that vision are not aware of the vision. So people then pull strings in their own directions. But if we could have shared visions so that everyone pulls in one direction. Uh, so if people think that political parties can save, political partyism can save Africa, but I don't because um, no matter which party comes to power, the same mistakes are perpetrated. I think that we don't have um, long-term uh, plans we should have national plans which all parties, no matter party A, party B, you come. There is a path chosen for the country and then you just come and contribute in following that path. But we see each party comes with a new manifesto. One comes change the education system to three years. Another one comes change the education system to four years. He comes, this man is building a project. He doesn't want to continue because people will say, if this, what he's doing is good, then why did we even change him? I think we should have um, national plans which leaders can come to force. So no matter who comes into power, we the civil populace, we don't care because we know the road we have chosen is a road that everybody who comes will follow. Then whoever is in power does not matter anymore.